Question and Answer Wednesday starts now. I don't know if you could believe it or not, but this motorcycle I literally purchased for $80 at a yard sale like two years ago. It never really ran right, but I make my dad try to fix it up all the time. He pretends it's a Harley, I think, a little bit. It's working pretty good now. Thanks, Dad. Side note, it's ridiculous to try to ride a motorcycle through the woods like this. You're all over the place. It's not stable. Four-wheeler, way better. First order of business, Over the Top was the name of the movie. Charlie Cicero, I'm, I apologize if I'm messing your name up, was the winner of that. I sent him out a hat. T-shirt was the prize, he asked for a hat, he got a hat. Hope you like it. On to the questions. Every week there's like a theme of questions. I don't know why that is, but unless it just gets caught in my head and I feel like it's a theme, this week's theme has been like criminal activity, starting with question one. Have you ever found somebody's marijuana patch? No, I never, no. Is it true you're wearing that beard because you're hiding from the authorities? No, I'm not hiding from the authorities. That is hilarious though, and I did ask a police officer today, can they put their lights and siren on and chase me down the street? They stared at me like I was maybe some kind of criminal or I was on parole or something, rolled the window up and drove away. It was pretty funny. I should have videoed that. When doing 18th century stuff, which do you prefer in the woods, a rifle or smoothbore? I think a smoothbore is way more versatile. Carrying it out in the woods, you can shoot shot, and you can shoot round ball out of it, so that would be definitely my choice of the two. My question is, what shirt size? Jacket, jeans, pants, shoes, you know, for gifts. That's awesome. <laughs> Number one, I like getting gifts. I mean, who doesn't? Shirt size, extra large, just to show my muscles off. Pants size, 38 waist, 34, 36 length. Shoes, size 12. Are you sending me like a clown outfit? I'm not really sure. It will be funny either way. Do you have any more ideas on how to cut weight in a pack? More up here, less in your pack. I mean, that's really all it comes down to. Could you do a video on proper bow saw care and usage? I did do a video on bow, bow, what are we? I have done a video on that. Somebody also asked me a question in this list about doing a video on just saw safety. I will do that. Can you recommend a good won't break the bank starter cam backs for someone just starting out? My wife keeps me on a tight budget. Two schools of thought with the ax. Number one, I would save my money up and get yourself a really good ax. You'll have it for a lifetime. What you can do, in the meantime, go to a flea market, go to some yard sales, go to some antique stores. You can pick up an old ax head it's gonna be fairly cheap. You're gonna have yourself a really good ax. It's just gonna take some work and maintenance to get it up to speed, but you'll have an ax till you can save up and get a really good one. And maybe the one you find at the yard sale or antique store is gonna be a really good one. Well now, my question is, how did you manage to get lucky enough to get your wife to marry you? I mean, I'm good looking. It's also hilarious how many comments about my wife I do appreciate it. She says thank you to everybody because we laugh sometimes when we read the comments. One of the best ones was like, your wife's a firecracker, boom. It was awesome. Your channel's so informative and entertaining. The only question is, why don't you have at least one million subscribers? I don't know, I don't know. I like to put a video out every day. I think I put out good content. Maybe one day it'll just give, but until then I'll keep giving you guys who have subscribed already good content. I wish I can get up at least to 100,000. Somebody in the bushcraft community at some point has to break a million. I'm just saying. How much did you have to shell out to get that gorgeous actress to play your wife? $179.47, a six pack of beer and a meal. I don't know, that's just what the agency said when I signed a contract. Love the Q&A. Have you, the birds, do you hear them? It's crazy. Quiet, please quiet. They just want to be in the video. Love the Q&A. Have you had? Love the Q&A. Have you have? Love the Q&A. You have had any clap? This, I cannot read today. It's just not working. But I feel like maybe it's the way this is worded. Love the Q&A. You have any classes or events in the New Hampshire or Eastern Massachusetts area going to be the Bushcraft Show in Massachusetts in April? 
I'm actually triple booked in April. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make the show. I'm trying to rearrange stuff, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it, unfortunately. It does upset me a little bit, but I have other obligations. Can you do a video on picking morels and other edible mushrooms and making them? Yeah, I sure can. We're gonna just wait till the right time of the year for that one. For your leather projects, do you ever buy leather? And if so, where do you get it? Can you do a video on leather working like your belt pouch? Belt pouch, if you wanna purchase one, coldcrackerbushcraft.com. That's just a plug for the channel. I always like to throw that in. It just spices up the video. Secondly, I can do a belt pouch video. I don't know if it'll be the exact same one that I make that I sell on my site because that's pretty intensive to make that pouch, but we can just do a simple design. And if I buy my leather, I either buy it from Weaver Leather or Tandy Leather. Tandy Leather's close to me. I have to order online, so I just actually go there and the workers there all know me. So it's a great time just hanging out. Do you ever carry a neck knife? Why or why not? I normally don't carry a neck knife. There are some knives I have that are neck knives. The only time I really put them on is when I'm around camp, if I'm gonna be using it for a specific task like carving or meal prep, if that's the knife I choose to bring with me. But having my pocket knife, my ax, and my belt knife on my hip at all times really covers all bases. Hello from Russia and thanks for the compliment on the axes. Thank you, Russia, for making the axes. Too late for a question? Hope not. Not too late for a question. I'm always willing to answer questions. I see videos on knife safety and axe safety, but today I got cut again on my Baco folding saw. The teeth, okay, I just said this earlier, but I started reading the question again. I'm gonna do a video on this shortly. Hey Dan, how much of your current bushcraft knowledge was learned growing up versus learned as you were an adult? I think it's really a mixture. I can't say that I learned every specific skill when I was young or everything when I was older. It was just a progression over time and spending a lot of times in the woods, playing around with a lot of different things and giving me a background in how to use what was around me. A lot of the finer skills such as flint steel and friction fire, specific carving, those types of things I did learn when I was a little bit older because I really started to study the art of bushcrafting. Compared to when I was younger was just go out and have a good time and if we needed to cook a piece of steak, how are we gonna make a grill to do that kind of thing? What are your favorite fingerless gloves or do you just make them yourself? These gloves that you always see me wearing are Filson. I also have gloves from Jaws Townsend and sons. I used to make my own. I just buy them now. When I buy them too, I buy like three pairs of each. That way I just have them. Is your Russian axe head upside down? It's not upside down. That's just the design of it. If you would see it in person, you would realize it's not upside down. I know a lot of people say, hey, that looks like it's upside down. It's just not. There are a few people in the United States selling axes with the heads upside down, pretending they're Russian axes. So be aware of that. Another question I know that's on here that we didn't get to yet is people said after the last video, why don't I just make a longer handle for my small axe? Okay, so I thought about doing this and I really struggle a lot because that's like the handle that came from Russia. So I don't wanna just rip that axe apart. For how much I want that little bit longer handle, I'm content with it how it is. Now I know what I said. I said if it was only longer, it'd be better. I'm gonna leave the original handle on for now. It's not that big of a deal. It'd be better if it was longer, but it's like one of them wish list things and I just don't want to rip it all apart. I do love that handle that's on there, but I would love it if it was longer. So I just don't want to rip the original handle off it. That's really what it comes down to. Is there a difference between a frying pan and a skillet or is it just a difference between English English and American English? I'm sure there is a difference. I know myself, I'll say, hey, grab that skillet. Can you grab that fry pan? Zero difference to me. When I'm at home, I'm always saying a fry pan. Out in the woods, I say skillet a lot more. I don't think there's much of a difference in my vocabulary, but that's just me. What do you use to trim your toenails and fingernails if you don't have clippers? Great question, and I bet a lot of people don't think about this. This was a huge dilemma for me when I was alone in Patagonia. At first, I thought, well, my fingernails aren't gonna grow that much, they'll be fine, and then, before you knew it, they were super long and I didn't know what to do with them. I thought about using my knife to cut them, then I thought, well, what if I slice my finger and it gets infected? Biting on my fingernails, I thought was a good option, but then I thought there's so much bacteria underneath your nails, pretty disgusting. And toenails, I can't get my toes up to my mouth to bite my toenails off, so what am I gonna do? I just let them grow out there until they were long and started to break. Some of them actually did start to break. At that point, I didn't know what else to do, so I would wash my hands as good as I could. I would scrape underneath my nails with my knife to keep them nice and clean so they weren't black underneath, and then I just had to bite them. 
I mean, it was, I didn't know what else to do. So I always make sure my modern kits, I slide in a pair of toenail clippers somewhere. So in a long-term situation, I have them to cut my nails. Bush Radio, really? They have like a total of three hits. That's going back to saying what kind of music I listen to. I don't know how many hits they have. I just like that channel on Pandora. Sorry, I don't like your music style. What do you do for your day job? Just wondering, this. Survival school, YouTube, sell some stuff online, sell some guns. Just, just all the normal stuff everybody else does. Wood carving tools, do you have any? Do I ever? I just posted a picture last week on Instagram of my wood carving tools, so if you wanna go over to Cold Cracker Bushcraft on Instagram and check that out. What I normally carry with me out in the woods is some type of hooked blade for carving any type of curvature in a spoon or a bowl. I find that that is probably the most useful tool. A small palm gouge is also really nice to carry. Other than that, the knives that I carry between my pocket knife and belt knife will get the job done. What do you think about carrying dental floss in your sewing kit? Dental floss is great. I always used to carry dental floss, and I'm gonna tell you why I don't carry it anymore. I hate carrying that big white container. I used to wrap it on a separate little spool, and then I thought, well, if I'm gonna go through all this, I might as well just carry some cordage that's actually more functional than just the dental floss, so I got away from it. What is very similar to dental floss that I carry all the time, though, is that artificial sinew. So it, it's great to carry. I just, I don't carry it as much as I used to. What is your favorite season and why? I love fall and early winter, like that transition when it gets cool at night, but it's nice during the day that I can just wear maybe a t-shirt and a button down. That's my favorite time of the year. It's just very peaceful in the woods. It's beautiful out and it's nice and cool at night. You don't mind being at a campfire. Favorite time of the year by far. I drink Coors Light, good endurance beer. Tell the haters to go eat a big bag of d I love it, that's great. Do you focus on any specific diet, low carb, high fat kind of thing? I do a keto diet if I need to really start to trim down. So when I put a little bit too much weight on, I'll use a keto diet, pretty strict keto diet. The big thing with keto diet is you still need to count your calories. You can't just eat as much fat as you want, That it just doesn't work that way. So I'll use a keto diet sometimes just to drop fat. Problem with a keto diet is you don't get really lean. So if you're looking for like the nice six pack for the summer, I don't think that, at least with myself, that keto is gonna get me there. So I use more carb cycling. Majority of the year, I will eat just very clean. So egg whites and bulletproof coffee for breakfast. And then for the day, I usually eat chicken and rice, fish and rice. Evening, I'll eat steak with jalapenos or some type of red meat. And then if I wanna eat a, uh, crappy meal like loaded nachos. Not that that's crappy, but like unhealthy. So loaded nachos or bar food or drink some beers, I'll just do that and I don't worry too much all about it. But carb cycling, if you wanna get super ripped, is the ticket. I mean, that's really where it's at. Have you ever tried mead? I brew my own, it's easy, healthy, and delicious. No, I have not. I heard about it. I just talked to a guy who also brews it that's gonna get me some. Feel free to send me some if you want to. Got a crazy question for you, Cracker. What underwear do you use? Here we go again. Calvin's. Calvin Klein, what else? Do you take a multivitamin or supplement to maintain health? I think a multivitamin is good. I honestly don't take it all the time. I have multivitamins at the house. If I start to feel a little bit run down or I don't get a good night's sleep for a couple nights, I'll pop a couple of vitamins for a few days and then that's it. I forget more than anything, so I don't worry too much about it. Dan, please tell me you're not gonna start drinking on your videos. I don't understand the trend of bushcrafters drinking on their videos. I feel like you are in the woods with knives and axes you should not be drinking. Kind of like guns and alcohol don't mix, just my opinion. Somebody just wrote this on another video and then somebody wrote it on another video. Is it the same person? I cannot recall, but I will say this. I don't think that you should be out with an ax and a knife drinking alcohol and getting all blown out drunk and then using an ax. I mean, that's just setting yourself up for danger. You need to be super safe with it. 
But on a side note, me drinking here that Coors Light, I took one sip of it and literally dumped it out. It's morning when I'm filming this, I'm not gonna be sitting around drinking all day. When I was in the wigwam and I had one beer, I was done for the night other than the fire or maybe getting my knife out to cut my steak packet open. I don't think there's a huge deal with that, but if in my head I had to go out and get a lot of stuff done and work an ax and work a saw, I wouldn't be drinking. So even when I'm here on my property and I'm just recreational camping, all the tools go away. I'm not out doing anything crazy if I'm drinking. So I am being safe. People just need to calm down about everything. Just because you see it on video doesn't always mean it's real, okay? Jeez. <laughs> but I do like the observation and everybody might just be looking out for everybody else's safety. I get it. And if you're in a remote area, you probably shouldn't be getting all blown out drunk. Do you recommend any books and resources other than your channel to check out? I like that you threw my channel in there. So Horace Kephart's books, you gotta have them. It's like the Bible of bushcraft. That's it, you gotta own them. And that's about all I have to say about that. I'd rather drink Jack Daniels, Maker Mark, or Bullet Rye if I don't have anything going on that's too complicated. The Bullet Rye, I wanna try that. Everybody seems to be drinking that and they like it. I just didn't get a chance to drink it yet. I don't drink a lot of hard liquor. Makes me get crazy, you saw in the arm wrestling video. Just kidding, I wasn't drinking again while I was bushcrafting. But I do like to have a sip of whiskey here or there. I would like to try that, I just didn't get out to get one yet. Ray Mears or Bear Grylls? Can you put them two guys in the same? No, not Bear Grylls, no. I do have a lot of respect for Ray Mears. I like everything he does. I think he's very knowledgeable. I never met him, so all I can say is the little bit that I have watched of him on videos and things like that seems like a super knowledgeable guy. What brand socks do you recommend? I literally wear Hanes socks. What's your favorite kind of boots or shoes for the outdoors? I like the L.L. Bean hunting boots, although where the rubber and the leather attach, the stitching broke, and it just, it really pulled apart. They're in for repairs. I think they're the best boots for out here, out of anything else I wear. I used to wear Danner prog horns all the time, which that's what I'm stuck with right now again. I'm just, I don't know, I used to love these boots. I don't love them anymore. I, I feel like they're too heavy. Once the water resistant wears off them, they're just, I, I'm not into them too much anymore. I'm thinking about getting a pack basket. Any suggestions on where to get good ones? Frost River resells them. I don't know where they get them from, but they're beautiful. It's the one I carry all the time. Check it out, get their straps with it. You'll be set to go forever. When are you going to build a cabin? I am gonna build a cabin, and I'm gonna build a Dick Prennicky style. It's gonna go up, it's gonna go up with hand tools, and it is gonna be kick ass. Killinger, why do you look so good in a tuxedo? What wouldn't I look good in? <laughs> I love them part two. All right, this is my buddy who wrote this. He's like, part two, um, I forget what my second question is. Great, great. Dan, you ever try General Washington's Tavern Porter from Yards Brewing? Yes, I love that stuff. When I do my two reenactments a year I talk about, that's what I take along with me. I feel like it just gets me more in role. Like, in, not in role, in character. I love that stuff. Do vegans go out in the woods? No, no. I don't know if vegans go out in the woods. Two parts to this because this is like a big mumble jumbled question and I know sometimes I miss stuff. If I do, I apologize. Somebody asked me if I'd beat Corporal's Corner at arm wrestling, that's Sean Kelly. Yes, I would kill Sean Kelly in that. He only trains biceps, it's ridiculous. I would absolutely murder him because there's a lot of other functions like triceps, back, shoulder that go into it. He just does curls for the girls. Sorry, Sean. Second part of this, I'll expand on the arm wrestling question. You were Creek Stewart, your missus are Creek Stewart, your dog are Creek Stewart, the smallest brownie in a Girl Scout troop or Creek Stewart. You know, I used to turn on the Weather Channel and get the weather. Now all I see on the Weather Channel is Creek Stewart telling how you can start a fire with a disposable diaper. Hey Creek, what's today's forecast? All right, now number one, I met Creek once. He is a nice guy. He's just doing his show. If that's what he's into, that's what he's into good stuff all around. Hey, he's outside at least doing it. I think we're just like two totally different personalities, which is fine. Everybody is the way they are. So, uh, I don't know. He was a nice guy when I met him. I liked him. And I think for right now, with that, <laughs> with that, that, wow, wow. That really blew my mind. But um, I think we'll cut it right there with the question and answer. Now, I know that this might have been a little bit more dull than some of my other videos. Um, it's hard always to beat what 
That last video was great. I loved it. So that's why I rode my motorcycle in. I am in a motorcycle gang, if you didn't know, Bushcraft Motorcycle Gang. I just started it today. Established 2018. We're pretty badass. So, um, hey, you know, got some more questions? Leave them below. We'll answer them next week. It'll be great again. So we'll spice it up a little bit more. Again, sorry we didn't have as much craziness this time, but I got to fuel myself off of you guys. And you just had some real straightforward questions this week. So we'll just uh, leave it right there. So this was Dan Wolak with Coal Cracker Bushcraft. Thanks for asking some questions. Leave them below. They won't be answered till next week. And until the next video, stay in the woods.